Welcome to Modern Gun Dog Training. Throughout this series of programs, we're going to be exploring the training that goes into these people here, the English Springer Spaniel. They're hardworking, driven, and tremendously loyal. And with the right training, they make fantastic family companions and great friends and a real asset to us in the shooting field. We're going to be starting off with little people like this one here, working right through the stages and ages and ending up with adults like her mother and her father who will be out shooting with in later life. We're going to be visiting lots of shooting estates across Scotland throughout these programmes, but we'll also do a lot of our training on public access ground, which serves to prove that anybody with the time and inclination can find somewhere suitable to train their dog. I'm Joe Hipwell from Sealpin Gun Dogs at Riddle Estate in the Scottish Borders. And I train dogs for a living. I learned how to do this from my grandpa, Edward Martin. And I compete with Spaniels and have had quite a bit of success with her mother and some others in field trials and have represented my country at international level. But what I really enjoy is helping people to get the best out of their dogs. That what, that's what gives me the most satisfaction. And I hope that throughout this series of programmes, we'll be able to achieve that together. Now we've got Missy with us this afternoon. She's well on in her training. Uh, actually a couple of weeks ago, she won her novice trial. Um, so we're gonna do a little bit of advanced retrieving work with her. The way I find to get the best out of these spaniels for, in terms of retrieving is to completely separate it from your hunting. Particularly, Missy, pay attention, sit up. Particularly when you're teaching them something new or difficult. Um, and as pups and that sort of thing, I like to do that right the way through. So in her mind, all she's had really is she's either hunting, quartering, or she's retrieving. And the two, I think, are quite separate for her. Um, and it seems to work quite well. You know, she knows when I'm sending her out for a retrieve and there's no confusion. And what I'd like to do here is work on the stop whistle when she's out on a, on a retrieve. Because it's something that um, you'll have seen it before, either at a competition or on a shoot day. There's a lot of dogs, a high proportion of dogs, that'll stop two or three times quite happily on the stop whistle. But after that, they get a little bit fed up with hearing it if they haven't found what they're looking for. They're a bit slow stopping and that sort of thing. I think a way to get around this, Missy, pay attention, good girl, sit up. A way to get around this is to make sure that they love hearing the whistle, make it lots of fun. And we're gonna set up an exercise here, Missy. We're gonna give her various retrieves with a little tennis ball thrown to one side, almost as a distraction. After she's picked the retrieve, hey, after she's picked the retrieve, we're going to then send her for the tennis ball that's just here. But while she was out on that retrieve, I'll have picked up the tennis ball so it won't be there. So she'll be hunting for something that she's seen thrown, but won't actually be there. And we're going to use the stop whistle a few times to keep her in the, air, the area looking for it. The reason this works is because she'll get to enjoy hearing that stop whistle because there'll be a bit of scent there. She's nice and close to me, so if she's not sharp on the whistle, you can just go, hey, take a step towards her, just remind her what she's supposed to be doing. And when she's done it nicely a few times, I'll just drop that tennis ball in without her seeing. I'm better if I show you, probably. Sit up. Now, she loves jumping, so we'll give her one over the fence here, that way. Sit up. With a little clap of the hands to represent a gunshot. <clears throat> and then the tennis ball... Sit up. It's just going to go just here. And I've rolled it on purpose so there's a little bit of scent there on the grass. But we'll send her for this one. Sit up. Sit up. Lining her up just like the pups. Sit up. Missy. Come here. Missy. Missy, 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 come here. Come, Missy, sit up, sit up, sit up, sit up, sit up. One thing that needs a bit of work with Missy, sit up, sit up, is a delivery. She's got the keenness to give it to me. Look, sit up, sit up. I just want her to be a little bit calmer. So sit up, sit up. So I've just been working, sit up, sit up. I'm getting a nice and calm, sit up, until I can stroke her. Come here, Missy. Sit up, hey, hey. Good girl, good girl, Missy. Missy, sit up. Missy, good girl, sit up, good girl, good girl, sit up, Missy, sit up, sit up, 
Okay, while she was out on that retrieve, I picked up the tennis ball that was here, but she saw it thrown before she went for it, so she still thinks it's there. So this is when the good bit comes in with the stop whistle. She'll be there looking for it, but she won't find it straight away, obviously, because it's not there. But we're going to stop the whistle and keep, keep her in there, stop her again, keep her in there, and she'll be hunting about on the scent and that sort of thing. And when I'm happy with how she's listening to the whistle, I'll drop that tennis ball in again. Introduction to shot. We're going to get Shanti used to some bangs. And to do this, we've asked Rosie to help us out. It's a good idea to have a helper with you when you're doing this because you can do it at a distance. If I was to take him out, I mean, I don't think we're going to have a problem with him, knowing his confident character. But if you were to take him out with the starting pistol and just do it yourself and start firing bangs over his head, it could potentially worry any dog. So here, Rosie's going to start off at a distance. And the key to it is, well, it's two things. It's the distance between the dog and the first few bangs. But the most important thing is that he associates it with a retrieve. So every time Rosie bangs, she's going to fire while the dummy's in the air. So he's looking at a nice retrieve. And then I'm just going to look at him and judge what he does. And if he's looking at all worried and things, we'll approach this in a nice, slow way. I think he'll be fine. But either way, he's going to get that retrieve. And it's really helpful if you have got one that's worried. And when they hear the bang, if their ears pin back and they're crouched and worried about it, if you send them for the retrieve straight away, it hopefully will start to get them over it and get them to associate uh, the bang and the retrieve. Because any dog, if you took them out and did a loud bang over them with nothing pleasurable happening at the same time, it could worry any of them. But here, we're going to get him to think that bangs mean retrieves and hopefully he'll get to like hearing them. Good boy. So keeping things nice and simple because we're just trying to teach him one thing at a time here. So just gonna, nothing fancy with the retrieves. Nice and simple because they're serving a purpose here to get him to uh, associate them with bangs. Boy, sit up. Okay, Rosie? Okay, sit up. Shanti. Good boy, good boy. Good boy, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, sit up. Ah, ah, ah. Shanti, sit up. Sit up, sit up. Good boy, sit up. Good boy, sit up. Shanti, Shanti, sit up, sit up. So he was absolutely fine there, didn't even flinch when the bang went off. So I'll ask Rosie to come a bit closer. If we were looking here at a dog that was worried by that bang, we'd keep Rosie at that distance, give him a few more like this uh, till he kind of got over that and got used to it, then we'd bring her in. But he was fine there. Do you want to come a bit closer, Rosie? 